There you go, little barred surf perch. Welcome back guys, short session today. And uh, Joe's here. Yo! <laughs> <laughs> You'll see a lot more of him. Uh, but today we're gonna start a new series and uh, by popular request, we're gonna do a lot more of what to look for videos. So we're bringing the drone pretty much everywhere we go. So uh, to maximize, what we're gonna do is if we end up catching a bunch of fish, we'll show you exactly what we caught them out of. So we'll put the drone in the air. If we end up doing really well in this spot, which this spot looks juicy, we're gonna go ahead and show you guys an aerial view so that you can see, so stay tuned. All right, so this spot is looking juicy. We got a sandbar right in front of us, which means there's a trough right on the other side. We're gonna see if we can target what's in these troughs. Another frequently asked question is, how do you get the longest cast possible? And what you're gonna wanna experiment with is how much line is between your last line guide and your lure. For me, I like about two feet between the tip and my lure. That way, you're really completing the whip action of your rod and you're letting it load up so when you cast, you're able to get maximum distance. It's kind of a habit that a lot of bass anglers will have just for accuracy to have their bait really close to the last guide. But when it comes to long casts, a longer line between your last guide and your lure is the optimum. So try that. There you go, it's a good one. So what's happening is this sandbar is right here, right up against the coastline. And it's actually possible to make more of a diagonal cast and work more of that strike zone. So that's where this bite came. So if you're looking at a channel like this, where it's pretty much parallel to the beach, instead of casting straight forward and being in the strike zone for not very long, you might as well make a more diagonal cast to be in the strike zone longer. And that's how this fish got hit. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's tiny. <laughs> so this isn't the first fish either uh, in terms of ones that struck got a bunch of misses so you know what maybe this isn't the spot so it might not make sense to film an aerial shot of this area but maybe we'll try to find a, a better spot because this definitely isn't the quality that we're looking for it just came in sideways so it felt really good but there you go little barred surf perch That's what Mario does for like five minutes? Okay, five minutes. Five. Five. Good one. Maybe. I don't know. Does it it's fighting good? but it feels maybe like a 11, 12 incher. And so Joe's fishing more open water, not that much bubbles on the surface. And this fish 
came in with bubbles on the surface. So yeah, we're looking at about an 11 inch or so. It's all right. This guy will keep because Veronica wants to have some perch dinner. So this is what I call a horseshoe. Joe is to the left over there and he's essentially fishing the top of the horseshoe and normally and by horseshoe I mean the deepest parts are right in front of Joe and I like fishing the edges of those horseshoes that's usually where I get the most luck sometimes you'll get them right in the deepest spots in the clearest spots but I really like fishing the area where the shallow flat meets the horseshoe and that's where I picked off this last 11 incher so what you guys are seeing right now is a really deep pocket that's pretty much where Joe was casting into and then to the right of your screen you're gonna see more bubbled water more foam at the surface and that's pretty much where the shallow flat meets the deep pocket and that's sometimes where they like to hang out because the shallow flats are where the sand crabs or the sand worms are washing into that deeper pocket so they're ready to ambush anything that comes their way right there so that's why that last fish ate right at that spot so that's theoretically what's happening and you can actually see right at the bottom of your screen is where those waves are actually touching the uh, shore and that's where they're breaking because it's so deep in that pocket right there and sometimes they like hanging out there but if you can see from the drone footage you can see clear to the bottom one theory on why they don't really hang out too too much in spots like that is because it is visible from the sky seagulls can see them pelicans can come and dive it's not much cover for them to hide and swim in between so hopefully that helps you guys out let's fish some more so I forgot to mention today what type of tide we are fishing. So when we go into this app right now, it looks like we are halfway through low tide and high tide. High tide is at 11 o'clock. We have to leave here by like 1030. So we're doing the best that we can. Right now it's at about four feet. So we're right in the middle. So those are the conditions guys. So it looks like we are about, what's, what time is it right now? It's uh, eight o'clock. So it's about three hours until max high tide. Typically, you want to fish at least two hours before and two hours after high tide. So if you want to fish for a four hour window, that's the optimal. Two hours before, two hours after high tide, fish through that swing. Well guys, got another one. Doesn't feel too quality. It's been kind of an interesting day. That's for sure. Oh, there he goes, quick release. Dang it, I was horsing him in. <laughs> right back out here though. Ooh, good one, good one, good one. Finally got a good hit. It hasn't been the way that we wanted it to go today. <laughs> but it seems since a, a few days ago was actually what's known as a king tide. The tide came all the way up to six and a half foot in terms of the swell. So it might have had an interesting impact on the fishing but apparently this fish didn't mind but it just hasn't been as productive as it usually is which is fine but that's definitely a nice one right there probably in the 13 inch class it actually ate the middle treble it's a good looking fish 
Definitely a good looking fish. Wow, awesome. So yeah, king tides don't come very often, but when they do come, you'll hear about it, especially if you're in any social media platforms on like Facebook, for example, people will talk about it. Speaking of Facebook, we do have a Facebook group called the Hook to Cook Family. And that's where a lot of people talk about fishing and it's a pretty cool spot. So if you haven't joined yet, check it out. A lot of cool people in that group. Another thing you can adjust and keep in mind while you're fishing, it's just another variable, is the position of your rod tip. When you're working a deeper channel like this in front of us, you can actually keep your rod tip a little bit lower, giving your lure a chance to work a little closer to the bottom. But you can vary it. For example, you could keep the rod tip up, prop the butt of your reel on your stomach or something, and keep your rod tip nice and high so you can work that higher end of the water, water table that is. Just things to experiment with while you're out. See what you like, see what's most comfortable for you. I've been noticing keeping the rod tip up has been really nice, especially with the limber rod. When a fish does bite, it absorbs that bite and it doesn't rip the hook out of their mouths. Another added benefit to keeping your rod tip up is it keeps your line off the water as much as possible. Of course, keeping less slack in the line as well, keeping that line tight and you can still feel the action of your lure. Another one. All right, this spot's producing pretty well. We'll see in a little bit how this spot looks from the air, just so you guys can see. But the break is pretty close to shore, so it's possible to cast over them and then land in a deeper zone and swim it through. So we'll take a look at how this area looks. Oh yeah, he ate it real good. I'm probably only gonna keep about four today. So one more and I'll be done but another quality barred surf perch, probably a 12 incher. So this area you can tell is just really deep throughout and rolling. And the last set breaks right at the shore. So it's pretty deep, fairly deep all the way through from where you cast all the way to the back of this first set. So it's all about at least three feet or so right out in front so that's definitely adequate for a fish to swim in it wouldn't be surprising to get a bite right up close within the first five yards in this case and it's all foamy but it's all rollers and it's nice and deep so that's what it looks like out here Another one. This one's a good quality. Just gave that one a pause and then a jerk. Fish on. Ooh. Ooh, it's pulling drag. I don't know if it's because of the current or he's coming this way. Gotta catch up to him. Ooh, nice. It's a perch. So one thing to experiment with maybe for the future is going to be single hooks. I might try single hooks. It'll probably, it'll definitely do less damage. Hookup ratio is not going to be as good, but it'll keep from snagging. I mean, I could always take off the middle treble as well. A lot of people do that. So I might, I might have to do some experimenting with that, but here's the fourth fish in this spot. So last one I'm going to keep. And then uh, get you guys some footage of this area. So from this view, you can tell that there's a lot of water movement going like pretty much 
every which direction. It's almost choppy is the best way to describe this. There's no real rhyme or reason to the sets. It's just kind of everywhere. But it doesn't seem like there's any big rips or currents pulling to either right or the left. It just seems like a lot of water is just converging on this one spot. But what's constant and consistent is it's pretty deep. All right, so now in this view, you can see Joe barely at the bottom of your screen, the bottom middle of your screen. That's Joe, right in that little wash. You can kind of see a shadow, but straight in front of him, you can actually see on the top left corner and right in the middle of your screen, that's where those two big pockets end. And again, what we said earlier in the video is all this bubble action gives the perch a bit of an advantage when it comes to predators looking down from the sky. They can't see them. <laughs> so that's what's staging them kind of in this area. And you can tell that even at your feet, a little bit, probably five yards out, it's already three feet deep right in front of you. So anytime you're casting out, you're casting into six to eight feet of water and those fish can look up and see your bait flying across the top. Or they might be keyed on in on some sand crabs or sandworms closer to the bottom. So it depends on what you want to throw. It's all preference, but here's what it looks like from above. And by the way, if you guys like these types of videos, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more and you're not subscribed yet, definitely hit that subscribe button. Turn on your notifications. Every time we come out, we're going to try to be as educational and entertaining as humanly possible. So the bite didn't end up picking up. Definitely an interesting pattern today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this sort of in-depth look at tide, what to look for, what places we were that actually got us fish. Keep in mind, we were right in between low tide and high tide. The tide's supposed to be about five foot today and the wind started picking up right now, so we're calling it. Oh, one last thing. We're gonna be cutting one of these in half. One of the previous videos, we said that if we can get 200 likes on that video, we'll take a Dremel, cut it in half, see the internals, compare them to Lucky Craft, see how that looks. But thanks guys. We'll be out here again soon. Hopefully we'll be on a better bike and you get to see those conditions as well.